James Harden speaks. Joel Embiid's about to make his preseason debut. And the wing position is deep. You are locked on 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Hello, I'm Keith Pompey, the host of Locked On 76ers, and I want to say a happy Monday to you guys. Um, as you know, the 76ers play their third preseason game tonight. And to me, I, I think that this is going to be another step for them because it's going to be the first time that Joel Embiid plays, right? So we're going to see how you can incorporate Joel in that f- free-flowing uh, ball movement motion offense, so to speak, that they are going to have, right? Now, the thing is, of course, James isn't playing, but once James plays, um, if he plays, we'll have a better idea. But to me, this is a major step because in Joel is a guy who's the first, second, third option often, and he's a guy who really, um, you know, averaging 30-something points, two-time defending scoring champion. So I really want to see how this thing works out with him in here and with the Sixers, um, you know, new uh, free-flowing ball movement offense, how that's going to work. But I'm not going to bury the lead. We're going to talk about James Harden, right? You know, James Harden spoke to the media on Friday um, about his situation with the Sixers. Now, he wouldn't come out and publicly say that he wanted to be traded, but I, I think that was left for everyone to know. Right. And you still have to ask the question. I asked him, you know, do you want to be traded? Like, do you want to be traded? And, you know, he basically said that's up for it. You got to talk to the. He said, you got to talk to the front office about that. I just been here working my butt off and I love the game of basketball. So I'm just in the gym putting in the work. That's all I can control. So in other words, it's like. You know, he doesn't want to talk about it and not understand it. The thing about it is you have to ask that question. But typically, if a player asks that question, they can get fined because they're asking for a trade. But you ask it because it's the elephant in the room. Everybody knows it. You can say, no, no, I don't know where y'all getting this stuff from. But the one thing, the biggest takeaway from that is that the relationship between James Harden and Daryl Morey is shot, is over. You know, there was times when everybody was talking about, can it be repaired? Um, you know, uh, you know this and that, can James walk it back? It's tough to walk back what he said when he called him a liar and said he'll never be a part of that organization. Yet. But this is what James said when he opened up. He said, but it's all about trusting people that you have known for over a decade. Now, him and Daryl go way back. You know, Daryl traded for him in 2012 from the Oklahoma City Thunder to the Houston Rockets, right? And they had that relationship. James has gone on since then. has been a 10-time All-Star, three-time scoring champion, 2018 MVP. So their relationship is, is good. Daryl got James paid. Daryl even was the guy who said some stuff that was a little questionable when he said James was a better scorer than Michael Jordan. But that was his guy, and everybody knew it. But James continued on to say, when I got traded here, my whole thing was I wanted to retire a sixer. And the front office didn't have that in their future plans. So it's literally out of my control. It's something that I didn't want to happen to be in this position. 
but I have to make a decision for my family. This is a business. Now, you can look at this two ways. You can say James is saying what he wants to say, and, and, you, and you, uh, you talk about, you know, the things that Daryl said in the past or the things that, you know, the Sixers don't want to, you know, they, they didn't want to invest in James short and long term. They didn't want to mess up their short and long term um, future with James, right? So James opted in and took $35.6 million, right, uh, for this one year. Because let's face it, as much as the Sixers are saying, um, yeah, we didn't negotiate, in order for James to opt in and take that money, he had to believe that he wouldn't have received that money, right? I mean, and let's face it, he took a, a $15 million pay cut um, and sign a two-year deal with his player option for the second year. Why did he do that? So Daryl could bring in P.J. Tucker and Daniel House, right? So the thing is, when did James realize that this thing was shot? Now, this is, I'm reading, you know, quotes from the presser. James said, me and the front office had a very, very good relationship. Now, like, I, like I'm telling you guys, he's not referring to Daryl by name, but everybody knows who he's talking about. He said, me and the front office had a very, very good relationship, like I said, for a decade. There was constant communication. There was no communications once we lost in the playoffs. Now, they lost to May to the Celtics in the second round. So that was it, right? Um, and I even asked James, I said, is this a relationship? that can be repaired? James said emphatically, no. Follow-up question was why? He's not, he says, not even about this situation. This is in life. When you lose trust in someone, it's like a marriage. When you lose trust in someone, it's pretty simple. Talking about the, the, the reason why. Now, the thing is, when you look at James, and I've said this before, and we talked about it a lot, He's been a quality teammate for the most part, right? Doing everything they had asked him to do. But you wonder, is he doing all this so he doesn't get fined? Is he doing this with the expectation that he's ultimately going to get traded? You know, there's a lot of things and a lot of thoughts that go through your mind when you see James do this. Now, let's just say October 26th comes and James is on the roster. Does he change his approach? Let's just say December 15 comes and James is still on the, on the roster. How does he feel about that? You know, there's a lot of different variables and a lot of different things that you, you, you think that could change the dynamics of what's going on. But he spoke, um, you know, we know the Clippers are interested. They're the only team that's really interested if, at this time. Now, you have to believe that the Miami Heat are lurking, at least lurking. You have to believe that the Miami Heat have made phone calls because, let's face it, right now, they need them too, right? Now, they will say that we don't want them, we this, we that, but the Miami is trying to stay relevant. They made it to the finals last year. You know, we'll see, you know, they need to stay relevant. They need to get someone. So, you know, once if Miami shows his hand or some other teams, I'm pretty sure the ball will get moving. But right now, until somebody steps out and says what they have to say, it could be a little bit slow. And then that's something that you got to pay attention to when it comes down to, you know, uh, how this whole situation is, is, is going to uh, continue. Like, what well, you know, what's going to happen? You know, it's going to be a lot of different things, right? It's going to be a lot of different things. But look, y'all, I want to talk to y'all right now about game time, right? And the reason I want to talk to y'all about game time is because, see, there's a lot of times with me, especially right before the, the NBA season, um, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a pit panther. Love Pitt. And I try to, sometimes I try to get last minute tickets before the season comes so I can go see my Panthers play. Right. And you get in that thing where it's kind of like, 
you got to bid for these tickets. Sometimes it's, the prices are killer. You know, there's last minute deals. You, it, it, it's just the view from the seat is horrible. People trying to over get over you. Well, you don't have that problem with game time, right? See, because game time, the thing I like about game time is it's is great for last minute tickets. They also have flash deals. They're easy to find and buying tickets for every kind of event in your area. You know, views from all the seats in the venues. They have lowest prices guarantees, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, the whole nine. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the started event, even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute tickets. So what you need to do is y'all need to go down to, you go down and you download the Game Time app, create an account and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-NBA for $20 off. Download game time today, last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. I'm telling y'all, do it today, people. Definitely do it today. So here's the thing. So Joel is going to make his debut tonight, right? And, you know, it's a preseason game. I get it. You know, um, you really sometimes preseason games can become tricky. It's now let's say if if Doc Rivers was still the coach and they were running the same old system, I wouldn't really put too much stock into this game at all. And I still tough to pick stock into this game. But me knowing tonight, my whole focus is going to be on how Joel fits in with teammates how they play around the first game we looked at it you saw freedom you saw a lot of different guys bringing the ball up a lot of different guys doing certain things and i shouldn't say a lot but the first game you saw tobias bring the ball up once you saw pj tucker bring it up you saw guys just getting free shots doing a lot of different things tobias was really involved in the offense and, you know, when you think of that, that's nothing new when somebody is out last year. Like, Tobias would step in and he would be that guy, right? So, the deal is I want to see how they can keep this free-flowing thing with Embiid on the floor. You know, I want to see how... If stuff isn't going right, and it might not happen tonight, but if stuff isn't going right, is Joel still going to be committed to this offense, right? I want to see, is he going to be a willing pass? Now, there was times last year he was a willing passer, right? But let's not get it twisted. I mean, you got to shoot the ball a lot in order for you to be the two-time defending scoring champion. I mean, he averaged over 30 points both seasons, right? So with that, I want to see if Joel can still be impactful, if the Sixers can still, you know, be a quality team with getting less out of Joel on the offensive end. And we, to, the first time we'll see that will be tonight. Now, the other thing is we got to look at it is like, you know, you got you do as long as James is here and if he plays, you are still going to have to incorporate him in the offense. So you're still not getting 100% of what you're going to get, and you possibly won't get that to see what it is until the season opener, if James plays, right, if he's still here. And the reason being is because, you know, I don't know if they're going to go have all of their starters play in the last preseason game. I don't know, you know. I know James says he's playing, so, you know, you assume that since Joel missed the first two, he'll probably play tonight. And he may play that that one. So that's two. But again, how is it going to work, right? But I'm really looking forward to seeing that. I am. I am. 
you know, I'm also looking forward to seeing a guy like um, Jaden Springer again. I want to see, you know, he had a great two games, the first two. I want to see if he can continue it. I want to, I want to see that. And like, when I look at this team, it's like Brooklyn's a little bit younger guys, um, athletic. Let's see how he can thrive or excel against them. You know, he did. I mean, again, Boston, that was phenomenal what he did against them, but it was a preseason. These guys weren't, you know, it was just a preseason, let's face it. But there's always different, what they say, different horses for different courses, so to speak. So I really would like to see what he can do. And and I can't wait to see Furkan play. I just can't. You know, I, I just can't uh, whenever he does return. But we'll talk about more about that battle when we get right back. Right now, I want to talk to you all about better help, right? You know, this this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp, right? It's, um, so I want to talk about this little episode, this third episode is, is sponsored to it. And, and here's the thing about BetterHelp, right? So the thing about BetterHelp is, you know, I want to talk to you about the time when when I knew things were good for me, right? But in a way, mentally, I'm saying to myself, like, nah, you know, this can't be true. Like my my brain kept getting in the way. Like, you know, I'm trying to, I'm getting blessed, but I'm thinking everything is wrong. You know, I'm, I'm I, trying to fall asleep at night and things keep racing through my mind. It keeps me awake. You know, do you ever feel, so I'm asking you, do you ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way, right? So if if you benefited from therapy, feel free to share, you know, your experience, right? You know, so here's this, if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charges. Make your brain your friend. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on MBA today to get $10 off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on MBA. Telling y'all, do it today, people. Definitely do it today. Now, when we talk about this rotation, this wing rotation, it's kind of deep because when you think about it, you know DeAnthony Melton's going to be in the mix, right? You just know that. I mean, Nick Nurse keeps talking about six starters and DeAnthony Melton in my eye is, is a part of that six starters right now that they have, right? So, but then we talk about Kelly Oubre Jr., who's looked phenomenal in the preseason, right? So you got him. Then you have Jaden Springer. You know, we're talking about him, Jaden Springer. I like what he brings. I think he brings something different than anybody else on the roster. I do. Then you talk about Daniel House Jr. You talk about Furkan Korkmaz, who's, probably the best pure shooter out of all of them. Kelly can shoot too, a little streaky. But so you you got this mix and you say to yourself, like, look at these guys. And I'm not even talking about David Duke Jr., a guy who I like, but will probably get waived, right? You know, Danny Green, right? Um, so when you, when you listen to Nick Nurse talk, the guys who you think that are definitely going to be in a rotation, at least make the team, Danny Green, Kelly Oubre, Jr., um, and, uh, of, of course, um, DeAnthony Mel- We already talked about him. And Jaden Springer, the guys are, are doing it. So what, where does that lead the other guys? Like Furkan Korkmaz has yet to play. He's going to uh, play in the final preseason game. Um, he's not expected to play tonight. Um, so you you have all these dynamics, right? Um, but I think it's good. It's deep. But the thing I keep getting back to Jaden, the reason why I'm, I'm a fan of Jaden, y'all, is because 
you know, most of these guys, besides Melton, are okay defenders. They're not quality guys that you think are going to lock somebody down. I think Jay knows his role. He knows in order for him to get on the court, he has to be deep. Now, Danny Green used to be, and maybe who knows he can still be if he can, but he's getting a little bit older, right? He's more of a veteran leader now. Um, in, the last, in, the, in the last preseason game, hey, look, bro had two steals. He, he was hitting threes. He was playing well. He was setting guys up, so he played well. But the thing is, Jaden is younger. Now, again, I still expect Danny to be in there getting the mix, but I just look at what Jaden does, and I look at that Jaden is a young guy who realizes his role, what he has to do. I mean, he said it. Look, Tyrese Maxey and guys like that, their job is to score. My job is to bring energy and D. And then if occasional three comes, if I'm open, I got to take it. That's his role. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what he could do this year under this new coach. But, you know, David Duke in the, in the, in the preseason games, he was uh, when he played. But when you see him doing drills and stuff with the players after practice, he stands out to me. He does. And his athleticism. And plus, I know what he – the things that he did when he was with the Brooklyn Nets. So young guy, you kind of like him. Daniel House, veteran leadership, great teammate, you know, this and that. Kelly Oubre has been arguably their best signing of the offseason. I mean, you know, if you want to talk about um, value, you know, this and that, uh, they got him on the minimum, a great signing. And I feel like he could be a guy who could be a six mere t- six man type of year type of guy for them. You know what I mean? So yeah, I really like what I see. The Sixers um, is going to be a good competition. You know, Furcon has finally got, you know, a new coach. You get confidence. You get to see what you can do there. So things could work out. So, you know, everything could work out for this team. I, I think it's going to be exciting. Right. But look, y'all, I want to thank y'all for making locked on 76 as your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow's show will be on a recap of, you know, dissecting tonight's game. So that's what it's going to be. I'm just going to be back, talk about tonight's game, things that stood out, things I think the Sixers need to prove on, how Joel and B look, the whole nine. But I want to let y'all know, you can get this podcast wherever you get your podcast at. Yes, it's free and available wherever you get your podcast at. But when you go to the YouTube channel, Locked On 76ers, make sure you click on that Liberty Bell. Make sure you like the podcast first. Then make sure you click on that Liberty Bell and you become a new subscriber. When you become a new subscriber, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll be a subscription, but you also get notifications when the next podcast come out. So do that today. Let's make this the start of a blessed week. Have a lot of fun everything. I appreciate y'all and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Peace.